All right, great guys. Thank you very much. Um, as moderator, I have the chance to pose the first question. And I can't just walk away from this because this is something that moderators love when they smell a little bit of conflict. Uh, because over there, I see Perry tell, telling us there is a secret sauce. You can make products, don't talk about them, do them, and, and it may create conflict in some form. And you say, no, it's decentralized, it's uncontrollable. And uh, what do you think, guys? Well, Who's he's right. right? He's right. No, there is no <laughs> secret sauce, actually. But the only thing that I know is that you need to do something for real. And you, as you say, you need like, to basically make it up as you go along. There is like, there are like as you say, best practices, but there is not one single way that always works. But it seems like you've made a couple of those that really worked. Uh, yeah, I could do it, but it's hard. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, but it's, uh, I'm just like, the more I practice, the, more, the luckier I get. OK. Stan Mike. Yeah. Well, you know, I think, I think when, you, when you try to break down, like, why people respond to things, people don't respond to things that they've seen before, right? They don't respond to things that they're familiar with. And it, it takes something very artistic and it takes someone very skilled to be able to create things consistently that are still surprising and interesting, right? And so I think that's why it's hard. It's easy to say, um, you know, like, oh, if you do this, X will happen, but you know, it, it's not quite the way it plays out when you actually look at, in aggregate, the behavior of all these different activities. All right. So I'm going to open up for questions. We have one over there, one over there. We have mics running around. Please state who you are and pose your question. Hey, I'm Rachel Hahn, and my question, I guess it could be for, maybe more for Pair because you deal with clients. And um, I work in marketing communications, and we get this question from clients a lot. We want to go viral. How do we go viral? And sometimes it's an odd question to field because you don't necessarily agree on what that means or if it's the best thing for the client. And I wonder how you address that client request. Uh, that's a good question. If if people want to get viral, uh, of course the, that's what they expect usually when they come to us that we will like create some attention to the matter. But uh, exactly like how to how to address their request for going there, as I said, there's like no, basically there's no one recipe for doing that. What we usually encounter in these situations is that people think of going viral as a, like a cheap way of getting attention. But when we come back with certain ideas, and it's like far from every company or brands that are like willing to take the risk, because that's what you have to do. You have to do something that's usually out of your comfort zone. It's like doing a traditional above the line communication. That's not that much that could go wrong. If you want to go like viral, then you just, of course, the, the risk is that it doesn't go viral. And you need and to kind of increase the odds then maybe you need to find conflicts. You maybe need to find, build something. There is, of course, a risk of, of failure when you do, you do these things. So I think that the, the clients, usually, they, we, we quite quickly realize if they are like, courageous enough to do something that's not really plannable. But if they are, and then, of course, we're all, we will usually try to help them as much as possible to create like, a story for them. But it's, uh, of course, there's like not one viral solution. But, but how did you persuade the Austrian Pension Institute or whatever it might be to create a school of sex? Uh, we said that it was a good idea. <laughs> right? I think you've got to be very pr uh, persuasive. Uh, OK, more questions. I had what, one over there. Huh? Yeah? Hi, I'm, um, I'm Juliet from London and I'm living in Sweden and I'm an art historian and I'm interested because I've obviously have studied art and watched how art becomes more avant-garde and becomes surrealist art and I have teenage boys and the consumption of YouTube, we, we, I have a YouTube channel, they have a YouTube channel, we both publish things online, the consumption is rapid, my consumption is rapid obviously with Facebook and in Twitter you, you pick up things at a huge pace. My question is, and I noticed with both your work peer and also your appreciation of the man behind you, that clearly that the perverse and the eccentric is becoming far more important as the consumption rapidly increases and some misogynistic imagery possibly also entered some of the work that you showed today. And I'm concerned that viral will become so extreme and so 
tasteless in order to shock, in order to become popularization to the level that you want to achieve as individuals, but also as a marketplace. How are we going to control that, and where do you see the future going? Because I know from an art historian perspective what happened. Yeah. It's interesting to see your take well, on it. Well, it's kind of like saying, how can we control humanity's taste in the future? You know what I mean? Like, I, th I think a lot of this stuff is a reflection of us, and why we respond to it is very, is a very much a reflection of, of who we are. And I mean, a lot of the examples that we talked about today, I wouldn't describe as tasteless by any means. I think that there's a, um, there's, I think it's exciting because we're actually watching sort of this unfettered creativity, but that can go in any kind of directions. And I mean, I tried to pick a lot of diverse examples today to show how that, that, can, that can play out. Um, but in, in many ways, it's, it's very much a reflection of, because these things are so based on how we react to them and how we react with each other around those things, it's really much more a reflection of, of who we are a, as people than it is sort of of any sort of controlled, you know, artistic, you know, direction. I just want to follow up on that. It is, as I think we have a picture of the, the more extreme we get, the more attention we will have. But is that the case now? It hasn't there been too much extreme stuff already that we don't really care about that anymore? Or I mean, if, if certainly the, the idea of like the, the fail video, which was like a very common thing sort of earlier in the internet, it still exists and things, but it's not, it doesn't quite have the same power anymore because I mean, how many times can you watch something like that? Um, but at the same time, the, that sort of idea of like the person falling and injuring themselves, that has been a joke for like 3,000 years, you know? Just because it's captured on video and it's on some technology platform that didn't exist 10 years ago, doesn't mean that it's somehow like a brand new thing. So I mean, I think that that stuff like still exists. But when you look at like the simplicity of the first kiss video, right, where it's like just a very simple moment um, that is very human moment, you could see how these things can play out in all different ways that we will respond to. Other questions? I have one over here in the front row, black shirt. Hi, thank you. Um, I work in uh, marketing communication, and me and my colleague, we upload videos to YouTube. No, no, not every week, but at least every month. And we would love for them to go viral, but they never do. Um, I know that great content, great content <laughs> yeah. is, is what you're, what, what's needed. But are there any hints or tricks or tips? Can I name it? Can I comment? Or, or you, you mentioned referrals. Uh, are, are there any ways I should think that I'm not thinking? Well, I, you know, I think the, the three things that I, cause this, I, this question comes up a lot, uh, you know, like in my life. Um, so I think, though, that like the three things that I always tell people that are so much easier said than done, right, are like there, it needs, you need to have some sort of plan for distribution. Like that's uh, sort of one of the first things that people do wrong. Um, I think people have gotten a lot more savvy about it, but for a while I was like, oh, put it up on YouTube. Everybody will find it and they'll all think it's great, you know, but there needs to be some sort of plan for distribution. And that's why a lot of the most popular videos are now coming from people who have huge networks online already because they have followings that are there when they produce something to then help disseminate it. I think the other thing, and we talked about kind of these two concepts, is there has to be something for me to react to. There needs to be some sort of piece of participation in it. And a lot of the times when people say, why doesn't this thing go viral? I will say, like, why would, why would, any, why would a person share this? Like, actually try to break that down. And for the most part, like, there's not really a strong enough, compelling enough answer to that. Usually it's just like, well, it's really good or it's really well made, but that's not a thing that people react to, right? And that plays out by how many videos become so popular that are not particularly good in quality, right? And I think finally, we, this is what we talked about the first thing, is these things need to be unexpected and surprising, and that is the hardest thing of all to do in any sort of repeated fashion, yeah. you know, as we discussed. Thank you very much. I think we have time for one last question. It's you. Hey, my name is Josh. Thanks to both of you for talking. Very, very entertaining. Um, question for you, Kevin, is maybe about Facebook video. Um, considering your role, are you looking at them and can you share anything with us about um, what you think they're building or where they're going? Well, I mean, I've been seeing Facebook videos of the Ice, uh, the ice Bucket Challenge all over my feed all the time. I mean, I think, uh, you know, it's hard for me to say because I think 
you know, we, I don't have a great insight into what's happening there. But I think, you know, video as a platform, and I think it's played out by the fact of how much Facebook video, Vine video, all of these different video platforms we're seeing, Twitch, how popular that's become, is that now that we all have the bandwidth to be able to access video content, um, we're seeing how powerful of a medium that actually is. And I think that all of these things are sort of a testament to, to that basic principle of now that we actually have the sort of, and in most of the world, is not at this level yet, but and we're starting to see places like, for YouTube, places like Brazil, where there's still like a relatively low um, internet penetration for the size of, of that country, how much activity there is happening around video content. So uh, to me, I think, I think about that more as an example of how fascinating it is to watch the explosion of the power of video more than anything else. All right, thank you guys. Thank you.